wedding season is fast approaching, so we're helping all of the soon-to-be newlyweds with an important lesson on money. Mindy McIntosh from McIntosh & Associates is here with some steps to help us achieve financial harmony. Now, why is it so important? for couples to get their finances in order before they get married. <laughs> well, we want to make sure we don't create that power struggle yes. with the finances. So we really want to make sure that they're on equal playing field um, from day one. Um, so they really need a partnership on it. Talk about it. You know, one is going to earn more than the other. That's, that's natural. Um, but not to be able to veto the other one just be, feel, because they feel like they have more buying power. Okay, sure. so not having any of that power struggle agreeing on things every month and ha kind of having a little quarterly meeting. Make it fun. Okay, we're going to go out to dinner and, you know, either while we're there or before we do that, let's have our little, you know, 10, 15 minute, sure. you know, kind of financial talk. Now, Mindy, is that, does that play into partners having the same goals as well financially? You they know, need to be on the same. They need to be someone on Jeez, the same yeah. page. So okay. when we when we plan for goals, we can plan for that short run goal. You mm -hmm. know, I always see when clients come in all the time, we always have the one that's more of the dreamer and they want yes. a vacation. And so we can have that short term goal or, or more of that vacation fund that they're setting up. Um, but we also need to have the long term goals. You know, are you raising children? What are you doing for college planning for them? When do you want to retire and at what age? And does the husband want to retire earlier than the wife? And so it's just really things that we need to plan for now so that they can meet kind of at the same level, even if they have a little bit different needs and wants. And, and you, you have to also plan in there like fun times, date nights, parties, all those types of things. Yes, well. yes, they need to plan all that in okay. because one might want to have certain times that they have extra date nights, the other yeah. one might want to stay home more with the children. So, you know, we need to finance that out but have each of them have maybe their own little fund fund so we call it you know husband has his fund fund so does the wife so they feel a little bit of independence so okay. this is my portion of the money I'm gonna do this with with my money um, this is your portion of the money to do what you'd like and then obviously there are other clout that they would create jointly for their long-term type of goals yeah, because you know what if you don't get finances together before you get married and get on the same page, it really can boil into a huge problem, a big mess yes, when you yes. get married because you're like, oh, I want this, but I want this, and you're not yeah. cohesive, which you would like to be. Yeah. What it, are some other steps? Um, some other things that they can do is if they're going ahead and taking a look at what are we doing today, what are we planning for later, mm -hmm. how, what type of trips do we want to take, what type of goals do we want to, to set forth, um, we can do some d budgeting as well with that. So if they really sit down, wife wants this, husband wants that, okay, well who has access to all of that too? You know, so we like to say, let's leave an open end access. Don't okay. leave one in the dark. Too many times we see clients come in, one might make their own decisions, yes. their decisions for the, the spouse. Well, then they go home and that's not a very fun right. conversation. And Mindy, you know, playing into that, is it important for both partners to be together and all of that and not like one, this person is in charge of the checkbook. Correct. Well, I'm in charge of the bank account. You should do it together. They should do it together because you never know what can happen. Okay. okay. So you want, you don't want one to feel left out or yeah. wow, I can't get into our online account. Um, so you want both of them to have equal access. They can both access those accounts. If one were to be ill or out of town sure. or something came up unexpected, not that the other one was frantic because they didn't have access or know what to do or where to go in the event to help, you know, even their each other. Yeah. So those those couples who are contemplating marriage right now, they're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm a little bit overwhelmed by all of this. <laughs> what would you suggest? How should they start? I think by starting, it's just by a open conversation initially of, you know, where do they see themselves even in five years? Okay. So, you know, people say, well, we don't want to talk about children right away or finances or how much money we're making, but really what are they looking to do? You know, maybe what drives them? Um, is it money that drives them? We hope not, but right. if it is, we really need to find out how that spouse is feeling. Is it children? Is it, you know, living a life of um, being happy through what they're doing together or different things they're achieving? So you usually have one that kind of wants to run the household a little more than the other, and if they have some of those talks up front, yeah. they really do understand each other better. It's open communication, that's it a big is, one. It is, and it just seems to work much better. That's, well, everything starts with communication, it, it seems, does. you know. Well, thank you so much. Hopefully, love will be in the air and all the couples together. <laughs> hope you're staying together. Thank you so much, Mindy, for joining us. Thank you.